Hello movie fans and welcome to Real Movie Talk. This is the show where we talk everything films and the industry that surrounds them. I am your host Dag and with me as always is Ben. Hey, welcome to the podcast. Episode 10, we're now on, this is the 10th episode. Uh, we apologise for the lack of, you know, last week's episode, it's just sometimes things happen and uh, this podcast sometimes does fall through the cracks a little bit, uh, which is a shame, but uh, we're back this week. Um, so in this episode we're going to go through all the news that we've had over the past seven days, we're also going to go through two big trailers that we got uh, in the realm of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then we're going to review Aquaman, and we're also going to be reviewing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, two new releases for this week. So... Before we get into all of that, though, let's go through the news. Now, first off, uh, Ryan Johnson's Knives Out film, which I feel like we talk about every single week on this podcast. Uh, it seems like every week there's just new news for, for this film. But it now has its official release date. It's now coming out on November the 27th of 2019. Um. Yeah, so as we've been talking about, like, basically every podcast, um, you know, new casting, whatever, I think they're on their final week shooting right now. Um, it's turning out. It's looking like it's going to be like amazing, and I think, you know, a really well-made film. So maybe they are sort of positioning it for an Oscars campaign. I think that would be smart. Like with that cast and Ryan Johnson. Like if you look at his past films, really, really solid, solid resume. And it's like this is turning out to be, you know, like a sort of different sort of well-made film i think uh yeah what do you think i'm i'm really excited about this film like just you know the story's great the cast is fantastic i love ryan johnson yeah i i think i think it's an interesting point you bring up there though about um positioning it you know as an as an oscar contender like an awards contender that's interesting um i'm not going to say anything about that yet until i actually see some footage see yeah, yeah. What, see you know sort of what they're going for um but this just sounds like an absolute brilliant project that they formed here. And um, I'm really excited about it. I think it's just, you know, it's got all the right ingredients for a fantastic looking film and a really interesting one. So, you know, November 27th, it's nice to have a date for it. I like that now we have something to shoot for. So we're just under a year away. So let's bring that on. So we also got the first official poster for Jordan Peele's new horror film, Us. Um, very nice looking poster. I like this a lot. I like the design of it. Uh, obviously, we have a what appears to be a female character where with a leather glove and some scissors. This is a pretty cool looking poster, and this film is obviously kind of like the spiritual successor to uh, Get Out. And this has also got a pretty cool cast as well. Yeah. Um. This, you know, obviously coming coming off of Get Get Out, this is like probably one of you know, people's most anticipated projects coming up, especially with Jordan Peele, because, you know, everyone loves him. And really looking forward to this. I think this poster is great. I think it's, you know, creates such mystery. And, you know, what is going on? Like, it's, it's really strange. I know it's a horror film. You know, there's little details out there about, like, sort of the film and how it's going to work. Like, there is a lot of, like, chaos and, you know, is is I think it's going to be different than Get Out. I think yeah. Jordan yeah. Peele has, you know, the, the creative ideas to create a different one, but also have like elements of what works so well in Get Out. And he's bringing in like there's like uh, Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke. Um, is that right? Yeah, I, yeah, it's I Winston really Duke and um, and yeah, Lupita Nyong'o. Are they in Get Out or not? I don't remember the cast very no, well, I, no, apart I from Danya. No, I don't think they are. But Anna Diop is in it from um, Titans. Oh, Titans, yeah. Black Manta from Aquaman's in it. That's pretty cool. That's, oh, I mean, that's a pretty great cast. Moss as well from The Handmaid's Tale. So, yes, I mean, that's a really good cast, well. that's it. I mean, I, 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 I'm liking seeing Lupita Nyong'o. I, I mean, I really like her. And, you know, Winston Duke, I, I loved him in Black Panther um, and the small role he had in Infinity War. I think he's, like, super likable. So I think that's going to be a cool... That's going to be a cool cast as well. So the next piece of news we have, and I find this news just incredibly disappointing. I'm really sad about this. 
Um, the Trial of Chicago 7, which is a film that was going to be written and directed by Aaron Sorkin, who you may know as a writer on, on many fantastic films like The Social Network and, and things like that. He also directed Molly's Game uh, earlier this year, at the beginning of this year. Um, that has now been shut down by Amblin Productions. Um, I'm really sad about this. I was really looking forward to this. This is a fantastic story that I think is right in Sorkin's wheelhouse something that he would have been you know the perfect choice to adapt and it's just kind of been gone and what's interesting about it as well is that it says it's being thrown away due to budget concerns which i don't quite understand uh i i don't know but i'm i was looking forward to this i'm just kind of a massive aaron sorkin fan i loved molly's game i thought molly's game was so good it was one of my favorites last year and the way he writes and even directs his films with this with molly's game his first directing self-appearance you know i'm just sort of up for anything he does and i don't know much about the chicago thing do but you know i have no idea what it's about but you know anything with him i want it and it's kind of sad to see this when i saw the report but yeah i just think this is like disappointing because again i i love aaron sorkin like just as a writer, I thought he was fantastic. Anytime I saw a project that he was attached to, I got excited about it. And then when he finally announced he was going to be making his directorial debut with Molly's Game, I knew that that film was on my radar, and I love Molly's Game. So, yeah, I, I was really excited about his next project, and he was going to be directing this as well, and it's um, just kind of gone gone into the fire. So, I don't know. It might it might come back up at some point. Um, you know, it might sort of resurface in a couple of years' time, maybe. Uh, but for now, the movie has been officially kind of kind of canned which is a bit of a shame and uh the next piece of news is that we have that scott derrickson is officially signed on to direct doctor strange 2 um i thought they were gonna wait with this news um due to avengers 4 um i didn't think they really wanted to push this even though i guess we i mean we all know that doctor strange is going to come back and he will get a sequel but also i mean i saw jeff snyder from collider talk about this as well didn't we already know this yeah i i feel like we knew this but you know it's you know it's just a confirmation i mean you know i i don't think you need to you know look into it too too much um i think it's just like them saying yeah he's definitely coming back you know um no one else is coming and instead don't worry about that it's going to be the same i'm looking forward to that to be honest when i saw doctor strange first i was like in a really shit seat (laughs) <laughs> like so it, i was just kind of mind fucked the whole way and uh, my eyes were hurting after but um i really really liked it even though my head hurt did you see it in imax in the normal cinema oh my god in imax that <laughs> um, thing is trippy i really liked it especially i'm a massive benedict Cumberbatch fan i just love him so much especially in sherlock I, that's like amazing um so I really liked it. I really liked Doctor Strange. He's like one of my new favorites. So you know, to yeah. see more from him. Yeah, and I think he. I honestly think he was like the standout of Infinity War. He was definitely one of the standouts for me, um, especially because like I mean, I really like Doctor Strange. It's probably one of my favorite MCU films. Actually, it's definitely in sort of like my top sort of eight, seven somewhere around there. Um, I think it's really fun and just a bit different than your average sort of origin MCU film. I think it's got a bit more to it than that and um yeah like i say when i saw he was going to be in infinity war i thought that was really cool but i didn't expect him to have as big of a role as he he did and i thought he was an absolute standout everything about him was great in that film and like you know even like his little cameo in thor ragnarok i thought was really fun um so yeah i'm really excited about doctor strange too i'm gonna be interested to see who the villain is because they kind of set up baron mordo to be the villain in the post credit scene but then i have a feeling they might go for nightmare but we'll have to wait and see i i really want them to kind of go down a bit more of a horror scary route with this um because that's what i kind of thought the first one was going to be it was going to be a bit because doctor strange is a lot more like supernatural and i kind of want them to embrace that instead of just doing a bit more but then again i have to look at this and i'm like yeah it's disney and obviously they want to go family friendly so you know it'll probably be a bit more of the same but I really like the first one, so I'm perfectly happy with this. They're going to get a new... I think they're going to try and get the old writer back, because I know Scott Derrickson is co-writing this, uh, but they haven't got the other co-writer yet, so we're going to have to wait and see who that is going to be eventually. But definitely good news. Um, Now, Sony has officially announced that uh, Venom 2 is in development. Um, Not a massive surprise after the 
extreme runaway success of Venom, which I don't think anybody saw coming. Um, so yeah, I mean, Venom, obviously they set up a sequel, and with Carnage, which I, I can't lie, I definitely want to see that. <laughs> I really want to see Woody Harrelson <laughs> as Carnage. I think that's a great casting. Um, so I think that'll be really fun. I mean, if the movie just carries on just being like this kind of self-aware, dumb superhero movie, then I'm fine with that. Yeah, this excites me, and it doesn't surprise me because, you know, it did so well, and he loved and enjoyed this film. It's not a very good film, but no. I, I just enjoyed it so much. I was laughing so much, like, throughout. I, was like, I thought it was hilarious. Um, and it, it just, yeah, it doesn't surprise me, but it very much so excites me because... You know, when I came out of this film, seeing the ending scene, I was like, I literally said to my friend, I went, I want to see a sequel. I want to see this. Yeah. It's going to be so much fun. I hope they they sort of maybe make a better film, but also keep that humor. I really like that humor. I thought it was funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I was saying to my friend uh, the other day, like, just some of the scenes are really making me laugh. Like the scene when he first sees like the venom face in the mirror, and he makes that scream. I think it's, I think it's really yeah. funny. And the scene of him like getting into the lobster tank in the in the yeah. restaurant. Really or, the, or the elevator scene was or, fun. Yeah, the elevator scene's good as well. Like, I mean, I I did enjoy Venom. I you know, even though it's not very good, it is it is entertaining. I can't lie. Uh, I did have a good time with it. Um. So yeah, Venom too. Sure. As as long as we definitely get Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy, that's perfectly fine with me. Now, Chris Medina, or Messina, sorry, has been cast as Victor Zaz in the Birds of Prey film. Um, very interesting villain choice. I didn't expect them to go with this. Um, I mean, Zaz is a pretty terrifying, pretty uh, scary villain. But, I mean, it seems like with this Birds of Prey film, they're really trying to go with an R rating, like a hard R, which I'm perfectly happy with. I think that's a great decision. And if they're going to do this with Zaz, who is a very brutal, very bloody, very violent Batman character, Batman villain... I think that's awesome. I'm not 100% sure on the casting. I don't, I mean, I don't really have an opinion on the matter because I don't really know who he is personally, but I was just looking at him and I was like, I don't really see it. Uh, yeah, so Zaz is interesting. I don't actually know too much about him. So, you know, I've heard of him. You know, he's in the Gotham TV show. He's... Uh, he's come up multiple times. So I know he's like a psychiatrist and of like has connections to Bruce Wayne and after the loss of his parents, you know, he he sort of goes a bit crazy and then um, essentially he suffers like a sort of breakdown and becomes a serial killer of sorts. I know that. I know, like, a rough guideline, but I don't really know the character too well. And um, Chris Messina, who he is, so I don't have, like you, I don't really have an opinion on it, but I like it that, you know, we're going for these Batman villains, and, like, I think it's going to be good. I'm really looking forward to Birds of Prey. Um... Actually, I did see Christmas Cena in Live by Night. I I really did like Live by Night. It's a Ben Affleck film. Yeah, I I fairly I think that film was a bit uh, uh underrated. Yeah, I thought it was like very underrated. I liked it a lot. Well. Yeah, I I, I think you know it's an interesting, uh, casting, Perry... but... interesting casting. I don't know much about the character. I think it's going to be you know. I, I'm really looking forward to Birds of Prey, especially to see Huntress on the big screen. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, I'm excited because I get to see Black Canary, so that's all really yeah, good. Well. So, it's a character for everybody. Um, now, we also have the first official moving poster for the live-action Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which has garnered the fair few memes since its, uh, since its release. Um, now, what's weird about this poster is that they've kind of made, at least from, because it's a silhouette of Sonic and it's kind of very hairy and very muscly. Um, it looks really odd. Uh, Sonic has never been muscly. He's always extremely spindly. Um, but <laughs> what did you think about this poster? Um, so looking at this poster, right, 
have that sort of same reaction as everyone. Everyone sort of had like a mental meltdown over this. I feel like I haven't read into it too much, but I just thought it was a kind of good teaser. I didn't think of it as like anything bad or anything. Yeah, some people are like seriously overreacting. I don't know what's the outrage. I just think it looks like Sonic. Maybe he's a bit muscly. He doesn't really look that muscly. He's a bit hairy. I think they're just trying to make it a bit, you know, more. I don't know how they're animating it, but I'm guessing they're doing 3D animation. I'm a massive Sonic fan. I've always loved Sonic. So, like, 10 years too late on this, but. People are gonna like this. I think it's gonna be pretty good, unless there's like a backlash because people, you know, hate this new poster because it looks, you know, so bad and whatever. But I don't see. I don't think so. I don't think it looks that bad. But that's just me. I think um, it's 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 weird because I mean I have to say this right now. I'm a huge Sonic fan. I grew up with Sonic. Um, so I've been very interested in this film. Um, I mean, I always get super interested anytime there's a new video game movie, just because it's like, maybe this one will be good. Um, I mean, Tomb Raider was pretty decent, to be fair, but um, I think that this poster is... Um, it, it did throw me off when I first seen it, um, but then as I looked into it, I'm just like, realistically, I can't see anything. Like, I can't actually see anything. So I will I will withhold judgment until I see something. There were a couple of leaked posters which I reported on, um, which, yeah, they kind of... They're leaked, so who knows if they're real or not. Um and they do look pretty horrendous but i meant it like early in the process back then because like they had like chris pratt in one of them and apparently chris pratt was apparently eyed for the lead role apparently before james marsden got it um so you know it, it's a hard thing to judge uh, but also one thing to know about sonic fans is that you can't please them they're like star wars fans you can't please them they you know again as someone who grew up with sonic and who's been a part of this kind of fandom throughout its throughout the years uh, the amount of negative reaction I've seen to every game that comes out um, is ridiculous. Although Sonic Boom, I will give you that. That fil- that movie was absolutely, and that game was absolutely atrocious. Um, but I am interested in this movie. I'm going to wait and see. Cause I, I know Jim Carrey is playing Dr. Robotnik. And that's just great. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, it's yeah. kind of like perfect in my head, but then I'm kind of just like, how is this going to translate to live action? Um and then they've got like Ben Schwartz is playing, um, is, is voicing Sonic. And I'm pretty sure they've announced a couple other things as well, a couple other castings. But yeah, there's not really much to go off here, but I just need to wait till I see like a trailer or something before we actually fully decide what's going on with this movie. Yeah, now... oh, it's, it's good. No, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm... What was it? What was the animated thing? Was it a TV show or was it a film? It was a TV show, so they did they did a they did a game called Sonic Boom, and then there was a TV show alongside it. I think it was on Cartoon Network. I might be wrong. Yeah, it was like in the I don't know late nineties. I think it was like eighties or nineties or. No, no, no. This this Sonic Boom show was like a few years ago. This was like this was a couple of years ago. Oh no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the old one. Yeah, the old um, one. The old one's all right. The old one's quite decent. And then they did like there was Sonic yeah, X, I... which was find the sonic underground which i really liked but a lot of people didn't i i loved the old tv show i was massive like when i was growing up you know i think it was yeah it was 1993 to 94 i loved that i you know obviously it wasn't live then but like when i was so sort of growing up i always watched that and because i played like you know different games of sonic on it um so i was a big fan so big fan of sonic i love his stories to it yeah yeah they, they, like sonic in in sort of um other media has been interesting like i say that classic sonic i think it's called the classic adventures of sonic the hedgehog that was that was a really that was a good show and then yeah they did sonic x which like sonic x was like kind of your typical modern day cartoon at the time i don't know how it would hold up now um but it was definitely a bit more kid friendly that one and then there was sonic underground which like i say a lot of people didn't really take to and didn't really like. I quite enjoyed Sonic Underground when I was a kid. Um, I don't know if it's just because that theme song was banging, but yeah, it was um, it was interesting. But I'm definitely excited about this film. In a way, I'm not sure if I should be, but I am. Um, now, Amanda Adoko is being eyed to write a screenplay for a Plastic Man film over at Warner Brothers. Um, 
Now, this comes only a week after we got the announcement of the uh, Blue Beetle film that they're, that they're making. And I'm getting a bit worried because this reminds me of the, the point in time we were at about a year ago when DC were just announcing all these films that are just never going to get made of just random characters. And I feel like this is another one. Yeah, um, when I saw this, I, I didn't really make too much of it. I'm a big Plastic Man fan. I really do love him. I don't really, I haven't really read any comic books with him, but I do like him in the animated series, like Justice League, the animated mm. series, and all, all of that. I think he's great. He's he's really hilarious. Also, Batman: The Brave and the Bold. Um, to me, but yeah, I had the same reaction. I was like. Okay, you're developing it. I show me that you're actually actually going to do it. You know, take it. I, basically, I'm not taking it too seriously right now until that's like anything. Same with Blue Beetle. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I really I do like Plastic Man a lot. Like he is just a really fun character and actually has an interesting origin. Um, Blue Beetle, like out of the two, if I had to choose one, I'd definitely go for Blue Beetle, just because I really like, I do really like that character. Um, but yeah, I just feel like Plastic Man is, um, I think that might be a difficult one to sell. Um, I feel like a lot of these DC properties are. Um, like, I mean, I think, you know, we'll be talking about Aquaman later, but I think Aquaman's doing fairly well, or like, well, pretty well. Um, so they've managed to sell people on that. So maybe they do have the potential, but. For me, I just like I think the casting is key on this one as well. Waiting to see who they cast because I I imagine they'd have to get like a proper comedic actor. I tell you, who'd be great for Plastic Man. It it can't happen, but it, Paul Rudd. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Paul Rudd would be a Definitely. perfect Plastic Man. It can't happen now because obviously he's Ant Man. But it would be if I could like fantasy casting, I'd definitely go Paul Rudd. That'd be funny. Um, and I would. But yeah, do you have any ideas for a casting? Um. Yeah, I think I think Paul we'll Rudd now yeah. looking at it, I think that's hilarious. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know apart from that. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it would be pretty funny. I could imagine like someone like doing like a mock at like Boss Logic or someone doing like a mock up poster of that. That could be quite good. Yeah. yeah, interesting one. We'll have to wait and see what happens if it actually goes anywhere. It's it's still like regardless of whether it happens or not, it's it's a few years out anyway. So we'll have to wait and see. Now. Uh, final piece of news is uh, Rami Malek, who is obviously known mostly for Mr. Robot and also very recently as Freddie Mercury from Bohemian Rhapsody. He was apparently being eyed to play the villain of Bond 25 um, before he got scheduling conflicts for the final season of Mr. Robot. Do you think Rami Malek would have been a good choice for this villain? Um... I think he's different, you know, maybe... I think the Bond villains, they try and make them look, you know, um, the normal, typical villains. So I think changing that uh, would work. But I think Rami's a good actor. The more I think of Bohemian Rhapsody, the more I dislike it, (laughs) personally. But um, I think he would make a good villain. I just haven't seen him in too much, apart from Bohemian Rhapsody and a bit of mr robot well, a I mean, strong opinion that's uh that's not very good because uh you're missing the key part of his filmography which is uh need for speed need for speed <laughs> yeah he strips naked and walks through an office nice <laughs> i remember i remember i put that scene in my review for bohemian rhapsody just because i felt like it i won't lie though <laughs> i i really like bohemian rhapsody I, it's not the greatest but i i really i really like it i don't know if it's just because like all I really wanted from that was just like just a celebration of Queen, and that's basically what it was. Um, but yeah, I enjoy Bohemian Rhapsody. I, d- I don't know about this casting though. Like, I don't know if I see him as a villain. I mean, it's hard to judge because obviously, don't judge it before you see it. Um, I know everyone brings out the Heath Ledger thing, but I don't know. I just don't really see. I remember when I first read this report, I read it as Rami Malek eyed for Bond twenty five, as in Bond. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I- but then I was it was like late at night, and then I had to like reread it. I was like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely would have been interesting. I would have to see what he, what he did with the role and how he did it, how he looked. Because, um, I mean, Bond has obviously had some some fantastic villains throughout the years, played by some great actors. Like, you know, I think Silver f- from Skyfall was amazing. Um, obviously, Le Chiffre by Mads Mikkelsen, Casino Royale. So that's a fantastic villain as well. So 
you know, Rami Malek, he's definitely interesting and probably would have been like a bit of a younger villain. But um, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen it, but it's not going to happen. So <laughs> unless they delay Bond again so they can wait until they get him. But... Um, I... To that, that today. Um, they're starting Bond 25 pre production. And uh, shoot. When is it? Autumn. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be pretty soon. I mean, I guess they're going to um, just move forward. I'll be interested to well, see who gets this role now. Yeah. They are starting pre production, so they will be casting and whatever now. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Um, now, we also did get a couple of huge trailers this week. Um, we kind of spoke about this in the last episode, uh, about these couple of trailers that were definitely that we knew were coming up. So, the first trailer we got, which came out only like a day after we recorded last episode, uh, was the trailer for Captain Marvel. Um, so, what are your thoughts on this trailer? Um, I like the trailer. I didn't love it. I really did like the first one, personally. Um... I thought it was quite good, but it didn't hype me up more than... I'm already pretty hyped for it, but I'm not, like, majorly hyped. I'm just sort of, like, because I like Brie Larson, I like Samuel Jackson, I like um, Jude Law, but Vince me yet with the characters in the film yet, so... I don't know, I liked the trailer, but it didn't, like, super blow me away. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Like, I think this trailer was better than the first one, personally. Like, I, I think I said this on the last podcast, but the first trailer didn't really impress me. It didn't really grab me. Um, and I wasn't really convinced with Brie Larson as this character. I know she's a fantastic actress, but um, there are just some actors and actresses who aren't meant for certain roles. And I've, I've never really seen Brie Larson in this role. And I, and I, I still don't really. Um, it's like we were like me and Ben were just on a podcast earlier today and we were talking about Ezra Miller as the Flash like Ezra Miller is a great actor but I don't think he's right for the Flash I don't think Brie Larson is right for Captain Marvel personally Um, and I still she was better in this trailer because she actually did have some dialogue that we actually get to see her speak herself um, on, on camera which again slightly better but I'm not I'm still not there yet and I'm you know I'll wait until the movie comes out when we get a full you know showcase of, of what she can do but I'm still, I'm not really there yet. And this trailer, although I did enjoy it more, and it was a bit more, there was a bit more to it, and there was a bit more life to it than I felt. And there was like some really, like visually, I think this trailer's stunning. Like that end shot where she's just flying through space, like shooting stuff. I was like, that is a stunning shot. I'm just, I'm still not, I don't feel hyped for this movie. And that is kind of worrying because I'm always hyped for Marvel movies. And it might be just because of the Avengers 4 thing, you know, it might just be that. And the fact that this movie is basically a bridge gap, but I wish I was more excited for this. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm like excited, excited before like the second trailer. Now I'm sort of like still on the same level. It didn't like boost my hype even more, like it was supposed to. So I don't know. I, I like Brie Larson, like the actors, like I said. I just think they need to sort of convince us more. Yeah, I mean, would you, would you, have you seen the theory that um, <laughs> that Nick Fury, how he loses his eyes because the, the cat scratches it out? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the cat's not a cat. I don't know anything about Captain Marvel. Yeah, well, uh, the cat in the comics is, is an alien cat. So. Right. And there is a rumour that it's a scroll. Uh, that'd, that'd be interesting um but like one thing i'm worried about with this as well is just like i said this i think in the last episode when, when we reviewed robin hood but like i don't know if i'm excited to see ben mendelson in another villain role like i don't know if yeah. i care like, he's in like every villain yeah, he, role. he's like the number one go-to guy for like big budget villain and it's just i don't know if i need that in the mcu um i really like ben mendelson but like after robin hood i'm just like i'm just kind of tired of it like he needs to do something else um it's not it's not his fault you know he's just, <laughs> he's just going where the money is but I'm, it's just still i'm just like i'm i was ready player one robin hood yeah yeah i mean Captain i really i really liked him in rogue one i really liked him in ready player one but then when it got to when it got to robin hood i mean that movie is yeah. terrible anyway but i was just like Ugh, no i haven't seen it i skipped it yeah I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't i wouldn't go back to it um 
but yeah, it's, it's an alright trailer. It, it's decent. It's just I'm not as hyped for it as I wish I should be. Now, the real talking point um, of the of the week was uh, we finally got the trailer for Avengers 4, which has now been officially revealed to be Avengers Endgame. So that's the official title. It gets revealed in the trailer. And I have to say, I love the way that Marvel marketed this. I love the way that they released the trailer online on their YouTube channels and they don't actually put the title of the trailer in the title. I thought that was really smart because I really wanted to, what I was hoping for with this trailer is to watch it and get the title announcement with the trailer. And I was like, there's no way that's going to happen because in order to actually watch the trailer, I'm going to have to click on a link and it's going to be there somewhere. It's going to be in the, you know, the URL or whatever. It's going to be there, but it isn't. And I was actually able to experience it for the first time. And I really enjoyed that. Now, granted the title reveal isn't exactly a big surprise. It was kind of like the number one speculated name, but it's a good title. I like it. I think it's a good title. I really like it. It doesn't flow as well as Avengers Infinity War. I think that's just like a really good title. Um, I th- I actually was spoiled before that it was in game. Like I checked YouTube to watch the trailers, and then like all these trailer channels for Avengers in game. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I like. Let me just double check and watch the trailer, <laughs> just in case. Yeah, it, it it was kind of like I I thought it was gonna happen, but. Yeah, I, I managed to just get through that. To be fair, when the trailer dropped, I timed it on my lunch break perfectly. Like, I literally just went on my lunch and it came up. Or I got the notification. I saw, like... I remember I went on Twitter and I just, like, saw the Russo brothers, like, tweet it. And I was like, <gasps> holy shit. Um, yeah. yeah, that was pretty great. Now, the trailer... I saw it, like, oh, oh, in it. So it came out, I think. So Yeah. So, the trailer itself, I think, is fantastic. It's... Um, I love that, you know... It, it showed footage it actually did show new footage um and but it was still we still don't know anything about the movie and i think that's brilliant and it's very dark as well which i'm also very happy about you know the ending of infinity war you know was not sunshines and rainbows it has uh, pretty much destroyed the world and this trailer feels like it like the music that they have at the start with uh, when tony starks and i believe he's in the milano um like that music is really striking for me. I really enjoyed that, and just his message to Pepper, the way like he's basically just saying he's gonna die, um, it very much hit home. Like Tony Stark, just never catches a break, and uh, here he is again, just about to die. Um, and then everything about like you know, I love the kind of turn that Steve Rogers has taken. You know, the beer's gone. He that went with the snap. And we also just got to see him <laughs> crying over something, which a lot of people are speculating is like he, his first kind of realization that Bucky is gone, um, or maybe that he maybe he receives that message from Tony, um, and like even like I was really impressed by Scarlett Johansson in this. She actually got like quite a lot of spotlight on this trailer as well. Um, so them two together seem to be like quite a good pair, which I really like. I love them two in the Winter Soldier. So. I'm perfectly down for that. And what's important to note as well is that Cap is actually wearing his Winter Soldier suit in this, which that's actually my favorite suit Captain America has ever worn in the MCU. So that's good. Um, And then I guess one of the other big talking points is we do actually get to see Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye or as Ronan in this case. Uh, We kind of speculate that perhaps Ronan, you know, his family has all been killed in the snap and this is what has led him to become Ronan as that's what it is in the comics. Um, And Ant-Man shows up at the end. So I think it's pretty exciting overall. Yeah, it was really exciting. Uh, and did you know Scarlett Johansson is playing Sonic in the new film? <laughs> playing everyone. Um, well done. Well done. Uh, yeah, I really like the Avengers Inf- Infinity War, the Avengers Endgame okay. trailer. I thought it, I thought it was a really nice little teaser. You know, new scenes. You know, not footage. I thought they would do that. Um, but they didn't, which was good. And I really like the Tony Stark stuff. Captain America mainly focused on that. And then... I love Ant-Man. I love Ant-Man and the Wasp. One of my favorite Marvel films. I love Ant-Man. And I just love Paul Rudd. To sort of break this sort of dark tension. Like, half the world's dead. You know, half the world's gone. And he's just, you know, yeah. Paul Rudd. <laughs> yeah. I love the ending scene, so uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's I, I definitely love just seeing Paul Rudd at the end, especially because like you know I've seen people like make memes and stuff like that where people think oh you know Captain Marvel was meant to be the one to save the universe, it's actually going to be this guy, um, which is true. Like I've always said this, like Ant Man is a powerful character. 
to have um, in terms of like what he can do, like because he can just get inside things and then just explode them from the inside. Like like we saw that in Civil War when he got inside Tony's suit and stuff. Like he's a, he's pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna be really cool to see him. Obviously, in the Ant Man and the Wasp post credit scene, we see that Janet Van Dyne says to him, "Don't get caught in a time vortex." I think that's obviously way too big of a coincidence to uh to ignore. I think that's what obviously is going to happen yeah. here. They're going to learn that they can time travel via Scott Lang, and then they're going to go into the future, the past, whatever they're going to do. Like, I think we're going to see both. Like, we've seen like a future Tony Stark in the in the set photos. It looks like we've also know there's like an older Cassie Lang who's been cast. So, you know, this this movie this movie is just going to be mental. It's just it's, this this trailer is also the biggest trailer of all time. I should mention that as well. Um, <laughs> so this movie is probably going to be in the top three biggest films of all time maybe even the biggest depending on how it goes if it can topple avatar so yeah this this is exciting i love this trailer i, I can't stop watching it i'm still watching it today yeah, I, I love, I love yeah it. it's, it's really good um by the way just quick shout out i really want to see ant-man 3 i love Ant-Man. Oh, yeah. i have to say i am because obviously i think i've said this to you before but i wasn't like a massive fan of ant-man and the wasp i liked it but i didn't love it um i watched it again uh, last Saturday, and I watched it at home, and I, I quite enjoyed it at home. I, I, I think I enjoyed oh. it a lot more. Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, because I mean, there are some films I feel are just better suited to watching it at home. Like I feel like Solo, a Star Wars story, which was a film I really didn't like. Um, I watched it at home, and I kind of enjoyed it. And Ant Man and the Wasp was kind of the same thing. So. I just love that Ant Man and the Wasp. I watched it twice in the cinema. Yeah, I thought it was just so good, so funny, and I felt like it was a break from all the superhero stuff. You know, I felt yeah. like they actually just just wrote full comedy, and it was hilarious. And I, yeah, there are some really funny, but like the scene well, in the school, well. I think is hilarious, and the way he comes back into the to the van and Hank's like, "Oh, hey, champ, did you have a good day at school?" Like yeah. stuff like oh, that. Yeah. I think it's really great. Oh. My favorite scene in both Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp is the Louise scene when he goes. Yeah. And so I went over here and I <laughs> did. This. So when I met Scott for the first time, we, you know. Yeah. Scene, that that was hilarious. I was crackling. I was literally crackling every time. They should. What what they should do is at the start of Avengers Four have a massive like recap of the MCU, narrated by Michael Pena. Yes. <laughs> That is what this that is what this universe needs. Um, so yeah, the Marvel we got quite well treated. We were meant to get a Spider Man trailer apparently, but th- that was released at that Brazil convention thing. Um, there are quite a lot of descriptions. Like we've seen like quite a lot of stuff. Like there is some interesting tidbits that came out of that. Like apparently there's going to be a relationship between Aunt May and Happy Hogan, um, which I think is fun. Um, they're also going to develop the relationship of Peter and MJ. I that's Zendaya's character. Um, we also get to find out that apparently the reason why Spider-Man is wearing the stealth suit is because he's recruited by Nick Fury on the on the you know school trip, and that's the suit they give him because he doesn't have his suit with him. Um, apparently, he's also going to be working with Mysterio, who is officially going to be played by Jake Gyllenhaal. We officially have that announcement now, which is amazing. Um, and they're going to be working together. They're going to be brothers in arms. That's how they're described. And then obviously, there's going to be like a villainous turn somewhere. I have to say, I'm so excited for Far From Home. Like, Spider-Man Homecoming is my personal favorite film of the MCU. Um, I love Homecoming. Um, And I just... You know, Far From Home. Everything I've seen about it, I love. I love the fact that they are using new villains that we've never seen before. You know, I love the Vulture in Homecoming. I'm really excited that they're finally doing Mysterio. And I really think they're going to be able to do him some justice. Because Mysterio, bit of a silly character. But I'm definitely excited to see what they do with him. And if they've got Jake Gyllenhaal you know finally getting jake gyllenhaal in the mcu that's a big get so i'm really excited about uh, far from home as well looking forward to it but like i, I mentioned earlier on our other podcast um i like spider-man homecoming a lot i really liked it first time second time i just couldn't re-watch it and i fell asleep but um i really like it i just don't think it's that rewatchable in my opinion um but the new one I love Jake Gyllenhaal. I watched him in um, The Sisters Brothers recently. He's so good. Um, I think he's just such a great actor. So, you know, I'm really up for that, especially. I don't really particularly care about MJ. I want my original Mary Jane from the other films or my uh, Emma Stone. Oh, who's she played? Gwen Stacy. 
Yeah, of course. Well, she was barely in Spider Man Homecoming. Like, a bit annoying as well, in my opinion. In the scenes she was in. I don't know. Is this is this uh, Zendaya? Yeah, I just. I was like, meh. I, you know, I mean, the thing is, the really, thing is, the reason why I love Homecoming so much is because I was I was really worried about it because I was like I didn't want another Spider Man movie. I just didn't care. I was kind of just like oh, it's just gonna be the same old thing. But what I loved about it was that everything felt fresh and everything felt new. Like Flash Thompson was like completely different to any Flash Thompson we've ever seen before. Like MJ as you know she's Michelle Jones and she is played by Zendaya. She's completely different. I really enjoyed that and the fact they didn't just dive straight into the romance. I thought that was really good. Like they had you know Liz instead who was a different character we've never seen before. Vulture villain we've never seen before you know on live action. So that's why I love Homecoming and for me like the Zendaya not having much screen time didn't really bother me. Um I mean, I really like Zendaya a lot. Um, I even liked her back in her like sort of Disney days. I kind of grew up in that sort of time um, when she was on the Disney Channel. So yeah, I, I I really just love Homecoming. And if we're gonna be getting more of that from Far From Home, I'm I'm just here for it. Um, I'm, the only thing I like Zendaya, and I haven't seen her Disney stuff, but I loved The Greatest Showman. So yeah, I like that movie. I thought she was very good in that. Yeah. So that is all the news and all of the trailers. Uh, we're now going to move over to our reviews. Now, one of these films we've literally just reviewed um, on another podcast we, that me and Ben were both on, and uh, now we're going to talk about it again. So that is uh, that is the Warner Brothers and DC uh, new film, Aquaman. So you can go ahead. Yeah, so um, Aquaman. Aquaman um, follows um, Jason Momoa as Arthur, who finds himself battling with his sort of inner self as an Atlantean, but also as and his brother King Orm plans to declare war on the surface world and it all begins when Arthur's dad, Tom Curry, actually rescues Atlanta when she, he finds her, you know, on the shore, wounded, heavily wounded, and um, it leads on from there. And main core of the film is the feud between Arthur and his stepbrother Orm and you know we have in the background we have like Black Manta and his and his side of the story um, with him following close behind and we have you know the adventure with Ar- Arthur and Mera played by Amber Heard and so so what this film does so successfully in my opinion it's breathtakingly beautiful. It, it is, in my mind, like just absolutely stunning. I think to look at and just to sort of, you're sitting there like in awe of this world that they've created. I think it's a great, you know, journey in world designing because I think it's just so unique and different and um, it's just wonderful. And pays homage to like Indiana Jones different adventure films like that and i i personally really like the humor and the difference of feel the different tones james one uses because he sort of incorporates different genre and i really do like that in superhero films like the idea like dark knight borrows from like film noir sort of maybe horror elements you know thriller elements superhero elements and i think he does this. There's elements of horror in this, even though it's very lighthearted throughout. There's elements, heavy elements of comedy, superhero, adventure films. I think it's a nice little mix, and I think it really works together. And the humor really works. And it, I was laughing throughout. Um, it's a very selective type of humor, but it works for me. And one just successfully actually captures that tone of Aquaman perfectly in my opinion and I feel like every scene sort of leads to the next and there's not too much fat on the film and it's not like extensively long and throughout the film I was just really kind of riveted especially with the action scenes I've mentioned this before but the sort of action felt like I was actually in there. I felt like I was getting punched. I felt like I was getting stabbed and, you know, attacked by monsters. But especially the hand-to-hand combat scenes, I thought were really well done. And I I just was thoroughly enjoyed. And I think this is a 
really, really terrific entry into the belt of DC and the visuals and everything else just combines to make this riveting film that I loved. And this is where we're going to clash. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I um, I haven't done my review yet. I'm a little bit backed up on, on, on reviews right now. Um, I still need to do my review for Beautiful Boy, which is amazing, um, by the way. Aquaman for me was incredibly disappointing. Um, I went into it as a huge DC fan. I love, I, I love DC. I, I love Aquaman as a character. I, lo I love his lore, and I'm you know I really wanted to like this movie. I really thought I was going to. I love the trailers. I love the production crew. I thought the trailers were great. I was like, right, let's go into this. I, I'm really going to enjoy this movie. Um, but after so the 20 minute half an hour mark the movie just went downhill um, but i will start off with my positives so for one i think the world building is really good um i really enjoyed like even though atlantis overall is a bit of an issue for me which i'll get to um when we when you first go into atlantis and you see like the traffic system the like hauling system and things like that like the ideas of just like these little elements of the real world actually existing in atlantis was really interesting to see develop and i, I enjoyed that and the way that mero was kind of giving him this tour of it was really good um visually this movie's stunning like i can't i can't take that away from the movie whatsoever it's absolutely beautiful to look at um i didn't see this movie in imax but i, I imagine it would be pretty incredible in imax um and also i just think overall this movie the movie has like a really nice shine to it like a really nice sheen to it it, it just looks really nice and clean and, and, and crisp um which is always nice uh especially like there are scenes like when uh he's being trained on the beach and stuff like it looks beautiful um i think it's shot really well especially like in the action scenes like the way the camera swooshes around and moves around it's like it's really clean um and i think it looks again really visually appealing to watch um and then also i think nicole kidman is a massive standout for me as queen atlanta i thought she was absolutely brilliant um just as really like elegant presence on in the film and had this sense of authority over everybody else which was appropriate she's a queen obviously um i enjoyed her performance a lot as well and also i really liked black manta in this movie um I, and you know i'll get onto ocean master in a bit but personally i feel like black manta should have been the villain of this film given the fact of how they set him up in the first act it seems like he should be even though i knew he wasn't gonna be because i knew ocean master was the villain from a structure standpoint i was looking at it going black manta should really be the villain of this film um, and also, I found Black Manta a lot more interesting due to his origin that's, that's given here. I think it's I think it's really interesting. Obviously, um, that he's kind of a pirate, and he, he's joined his father, who's also a pirate. And Aquaman comes on and stops them in a, in the middle of a raid, and his father dies, and Aquaman basically just leaves him there. I thought that was actually a pretty good origin, and I, you know, I think the motivation there was fairly believable. My only problem with Black Manta was that not only was he not in it enough, but also that I felt like his suit was a little bit uh dodgy it's um it's a bit it looks a bit plasticky um but i will say as well that that black manta suit is probably one of the most difficult comic book costumes to adapt it's one of the most silly it's one of the most ridiculous so you know fair play i think they did the best they could and it's mainly the helmet that looks a bit odd the rest of it's fine it's just the hilt it's just the helmet um but that's kind of where my positives end the main fundamentals of the movie is where I think this movie completely falls apart. It's kind of... The performances overall for me didn't impress me. I know you really like them, but for me, like Amber Heard, I thought she was good in the movie, but not great. Same with Jason Momoa. Like, he's really likable, but he's just, again, basically playing himself in this. Um, and then the story just wasn't that engrossing to me. It's kind of very cliche, which cliches aren't an issue, because um, obviously there's nothing really that original these days, but... I feel like there could have been a bit more spice to it. The script, the dialogue was really cheesy. There's nothing really to... Like, I found the dialogue really basic. Like, I was listening to it going, like, could they not try a bit harder? Like, to actually do something a bit different. Um, Ocean Master, I didn't like as a villain. I felt him just to be very basic and, again, very cliche with n no real spice to him. The tone of the movie, I think the film has a massive tonal issue. Like, there's a, there's a moment in the film that really stuck out like a sore thumb to me. And it's the moment when, immediately when Arthur and Mera land in the Sahara after they jump out the plane. Like, there's like, it's like the music changed or something. Like, there isn't even any music in this scene, but that's how much it feels like. The mu It's like there's just like this change in the air. And the movie just went from like a pretty serious kind of, you know, but fun adventure film into practically a comedy. And I was like, 
okay, this is it was like too quick of a change to handle. Um, and the humor for me didn't land at all. Um, there was not one joke I really laughed at. The only one I kind of found slightly amusing was the one where he's in the bar and the guys come up and try and take selfies and then you see how you know, he progressively got more drunk throughout the night. I thought that was kind of amusing, but that was the only one I really kind of gravitated towards. Um, so the humor didn't really work for me. And then the biggest problem with this, I think, is that Atlantis, even though what I said about the world building, overall, Atlantis didn't translate very well to live action for me personally. I mean, I I really do admire their attempt because, again, out of all the DC characters and all the major DC characters who were going to get a standalone film, Aquaman was one of the most difficult ones they could have done. Aquaman is an incredibly tricky character. It's kind of like what I said about Thor, like in the MCU. You know, Thor was an incredibly tricky one to do and they did it. And again, Aquaman, I think they probably did a really good job here in terms of what they could do. It just, you know, there are some things that don't work in live action. And for me, Atlantis didn't work. Um, just because I just felt like the the underwater stuff, the way they moved, the CGI of it all. I think the CGI is really poor in this movie as well. Um, just in terms of like green screen effects and things like that. Um, the way that they spoke, like they had like this muffle effect, which, you know, we were talking about this earlier. I, I reckon that was intentional. Um but I feel like they probably just shouldn't have had that because it almost made some lines difficult to understand, uh, at least for me personally. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very, very back and forth with this film. It's a mixed bag. Um, personally, I didn't enjoy it. I found it quite boring, to be honest. Um, and I think the runtime really made that more evident. Because um, the thing is, if you have a long movie, like you know, it has to be entertaining for that for that time. And this movie, for me personally, was not. So. It's a mixed bag. It's definitely an interesting one. Um, but for me, it's definitely not the strongest of DC's lineup. Yeah, where would you rank it in your DC EU lineup? Um, so at the bottom, I have. Um, let's think. See, the thing is, I, I really enjoy Suicide Squad, even though it's mm -hmm. the worst film of the of the lot. Um, so I would put, I'd, I'd put Suicide Squad at the bottom, then I put Batman vs Superman, then I'd put, oh no, no, sorry, I was forgetting Justice League, sorry, Suicide Squad at the bottom, then, I knew I was forgetting one, then Justice League, then Batman vs Superman, then Aquaman, then Man of Steel, and then Wonder Woman at the top. Alright, I would go Suicide Squad definitely at the bottom, I would go Man of Steel, Justice League as Superman then I go Aquaman then I go Wonder Woman I just think that Aquaman I have a soft spot for Batman vs Superman I actually do like it I, I went so back and forth with that film like I do with all these DC films to be honest the only ones I haven't really was Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman like Suicide Squad is not good but I personally I do enjoy it I ha like if I watch it I have fun with it and then Wonder Woman. I never liked. Really. I never liked. I, no. I remember when I came out of it, I was like, "That was really fun." <laughs> like, really? I was, yeah, I was just like, I really enjoyed that film. Like, I saw it. I think I saw it twice, maybe three times. I just, I had a good time with it. Um, Once. and then Wonder Woman, like, being my number one. I think Wonder Woman's just easily the best one, like head and shoulders above the rest. It's just like, even though the third Watch act really lets that movie down. Um, Love Wonder Woman. Like the but like that second act, especially in Wonder Woman, is phenomenal so good just, and the relationship between yeah. diana and steve is is great so i just love wonder woman so much i thought the film was so good honestly every time i watch the scene where she comes out from the trench yeah i literally cry i'm not lying <laughs> every time and when it happened in the cinema i literally started crying like sort of just sobbing in like happiness. I don't it's know. A fantastic moment. I I do love Wonder Woman. I really enjoy it. Like I say, except for the third act, which I just think gets a bit CGI too CGI heavy. Which I think that's a problem with literally every DCEU film. Like literally every single one has done it. Um, I think they need to really calm down with that. That's why I'm kind of excited for like Birds of Prey because I feel like I can be a lot more grounded. Like they need to just lay off. Like with Aquaman, I don't really mind because again, this whole movie is practically CGI, um, so that doesn't really bother me as much. But like for Wonder Woman, especially because Wonder Woman was very grounded for the most part, it kind of felt out of place. Um, but anyway, back to Aquaman. Um, I, I, I've bring bringing up this joke. I've said it to you earlier today, but as soon as I saw an octopus playing the bongos, that was just that was the end of it. 
Like, <laughs> I, I'm all for, you know, the dispense of disbelief and stuff like that, but I just, I can't get on board with that. <laughs> I can't. I sort of laughed when I saw it. I, d- I didn't know it was a laugh or cry. <laughs> It was like a moment, like, you know in The Flash recently when Iris jumped out of the building? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Some people were, like, disgusted over that. They're like, why the fuck would you do that? Yeah. But I just hysterically laughed when I was watching it. Yeah. That's I, sort of I the same thing. And then I, was kind of, I really laughed at it and then I, because I was just laughing because of how dumb it was. Yeah. And then with this, I was just kind of like, again, I, it just reminded me of The Little Mermaid and Under the Sea. And that's all I could think of for the rest of the film. It was really distracting. Because <laughs> I was just watching the film and just having Under the Sea just, like, playing in my head. Um, yeah, that, it was a bit weird, all that. Um, but I, it's a shame. I, re- I think I should watch it again. Um, it was funny. My friend has been messaging me today and says, oh, we should go watch Aquaman tomorrow. And I was just like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go care. watch it go watch it do it again I, I might watch it again over the next week or so like i'm, I'm watching bumblebee tomorrow but um yeah I, I i probably will go see it again just because i think i do need to give it another go um but yeah i mean thing is here's the thing all the stuff on the surface i liked all the stuff in atlantis i didn't like the scenes in in italy you know that that rooftop chase yeah, yeah i love that um, and I even like the stuff where like Mera is kind of like a fish out of water, no pun intended, where she's kind of, you know, going around to this market and not like eating flowers and stuff like that. Like that kind oh, of, God, yeah. like that kind of, <laughs> that, that worked for me. I, I, I thought that was good. I thought that, that was quite hilarious. Fun, to be fair. Um, and, you know, I just think like this movie does have a lot of really good stuff in it. And I know that this movie is like really working for a lot of people. Like obviously you love it. I know that the majority of people watching this really like it. Um, but for me, it's just a bit of a mixed bag, and it, I was just I was very disappointed and, and and quite let down by it personally. Did you have any final thoughts? Um, no, I think we've roughly covered all that I want to talk about to do back, man. Cool. So we're now going to move over to our final review, which is for Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Um, this is also out this week. I saw it exactly. Yeah, I saw it a week ago today. Um, when did, when did you see it? Uh, I saw it early December. Wow. Um, yeah, I saw it a week ago. Um, so I'll start off with this one. Um, I love this movie. This movie is beautiful. It's funny. It's real. It's relatable. Um, at the performances, you know, because this obviously with the animation, it's it's hard to kind of really judge performances in terms of on a physical level. But I really felt it in this. Like, these performances felt so real. Um, and that's because I would honestly go to the level. I don't think this is a kid's movie. Not at all. I think this no. is just, you know, because if, if it, just because it's animated it doesn't mean it's a kid's film. It's just, it's a, it's a way of telling a story. Like, I mean, I don't know if you saw Isle of Dogs earlier this year. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that film. That's that's not a kid's film at all. It's just, it's in animation. Um, I Fantastic think, Mr. Fox. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that, you know all the themes that this movie deals with i mean kids will go to this movie and they will enjoy it uh, but they won't understand a lot of the you know deeper stuff which i think again that's this is a great family movie in that in that sense um it kind of ticks all the boxes the animation in this film is absolutely stunning it's a treat for the eyes i've never seen animation like this this is something i've it's kind of like a weird cross between 2d and 3d animation and I found that absolutely fascinating to watch. Um, I can't wait for the Blu-ray to come out so I can watch like the behind-the-scenes stuff because this is going to be a really interesting watch. Um, the humor absolutely on point. Um, whether it's just you know actual situational humor and reactionary humor, or whether you're looking at references to previous Spider-Man movies like the Spider-Man Three dance thing, I thought was absolutely brilliant. Um, just the fact they were able to reference that and get away with it, I think, was hilarious. That does lead me to a little bit of a missed opportunity. This isn't a negative, it's just something I would have liked to have seen. It wouldn't have been great if they could have got Tobey Maguire to a cameo in this movie. Yeah, it would have been. That would have been great. But also, just like the message behind this movie, I think is really inspiring. Like, this really comes from the the mind of Stan Lee and and, and Steve Ditko, who, of course, both passed away this year. And there's a lovely um, send off to them in this movie as well. Um, But the message, you know, just anybody can really be a hero and things like that. And. You know, that's kind of like the core of the Spider-Man character and the core of Marvel, really, is um, just anybody can be a hero. And that's why everyone, 
you know, a lot of kids relate to Spider-Man is because he literally is just a kid who got superpowers, um, and, you know, he's kind of a nerdy kid and things like that. And I think that this movie really relates that message really well. Soundtrack, brilliant. The soundtrack, actually, the full soundtrack released today, I've been listening to it all day. It's just, it fits. It's not even music I typically like, but it's music that fits the movie so, so well in terms of its tone and its characters that it's just really great, and I've been jamming out to it all week, all day. Um, and then finally, I have to say the performances. So, you know, Shamik Moore, who I loved in Dope, um, he's great as Miles Morales. And even just Miles Morales overall as a character, I found really interesting because obviously we've had so many different versions of Peter Parker. It's really nice to get a different version of Spider-Man and to get Miles Morales. And I think he was really at the top of his game here. And again, felt really physical in his performance. Jake Johnson, who's a bit hit and miss with me. This genuinely might be my favorite role ever of his. Um, I think he worked so well as like this older, slightly over the hill, um, but incredibly capable Spider-Man. Like I think it just, I think that works so well. And I actually found his story really engrossing i found all the characters in this really engrossing that's the thing this movie with the characters it feels so real that i was just so engrossed in all their stories Haley steinfeld who i absolutely adore um i thought she was great as spider gwen nicholas cage is obviously amazing as a spider-man noir uh, john mulaney as spider ham he was fantastic i've been waiting to see spider ham in a, in a movie i never thought it would happen but here we are um so yeah like just i honestly adore this movie i don't really i don't really have a negative honestly yeah i i don't really have a negative at all i thoroughly love this movie this is one of my favorite films of the year it's like maybe top 10 i think it's like on the edge it's like so good like to an animated film to go do it surprised me that much like when i was going into the film i was like very excited i'm excited but i'm not like overhyped I'm not hyped like loads of people, but coming out of this film, I was just like, oh my god. Awesome. This is just amazing. Um, I loved Miles Morales. I was so engrossed in the story. But I also loved Peter Parker. I thought he's so good. Yeah, he's great. I thought he's so good. And I thought the humor worked so well in this film. And the animation was new. It was great. And I thought like the spider people were great, like um, especially Spider Man Noir. Yeah, he's so I loved. Funny. Like I thought he was so good. Um, I'm, yeah, I just think this film was put together so well, and you know, the humor, the tone, and the performances, the direction. You know, I think it all really comes together and shows as one whole, like you know, nearly perfect piece. And I think the writing is just like incredible. I think it's so precise as well. So, you know, I really have no complaints at all. Yeah. It's, it's really is like a masterpiece of animation. And honestly, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this, like it's been a week now since I've seen this movie, you know, it's marinated in my head. I genuinely think this is my favorite Spider-Man movie of all time. And that's, that's, yeah. a, that's a bold statement, you know, with movies like Homecoming and Spider-Man 2. But for me, up there. for me, I just, it felt so different. It felt so unique. And like for a superhero movie, like I never expected, you know, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse to be potentially my favorite comic book movie of the year. I would have never predicted that, um, you know, especially with, you know, this year with Infinity War, Black Panther. Like, there's no way I would have predicted that Spider-Verse would be my favorite comic book movie of the year. But it's just, this movie felt really special. This movie felt really unique. And I, you know, as a cinema goer, as a film fan, I love when I get to see a unique film, something different, something, you know, that kind of subverts my expectations. And this movie completely did that. It's an absolute joy to watch. It's an absolute blast. It's just fun. Anyone can enjoy this movie. You know, anybody can go watch this movie and enjoy it on some level, um, whether they are younger, older, whether you're a comic book fan or not, you can enjoy this movie on some angle. And again, just the performances, they're so real because animation performances can sometimes come across a bit idealistic and a bit, you know, kind of like playing up to the role a little bit, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, they kind of feel fake in a way, um, yeah. just because of the way the films are. But this, like, this literally felt like physical performances, um, just 
purely down to the voice and I, again i kind of want to see behind the scenes stuff of these actors like doing the voice because i want to see how they were actually moving their bodies and their hands when they were doing it because this felt so physical and it felt really real and again that realism is what really drew me into the film and really made me get captivated by these characters i adore spider-verse i can't wait to see it again i'm definitely going to see it over the next two weeks at some point when it's out because it's special it really is so that draws this episode to a close um so let us know what you thought of aquaman and spider-verse who do you agree with on aquaman do you agree with me or do you agree with ben uh what is your opinion on both of these films make sure you let us know and as always guys if you want to see these more of these episodes more of these podcasts make sure you subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video and if you want to see more from me and ben make sure you subscribe to our respective channels i'll leave them linked in the description down below and as always guys thank you guys for listening we hope you enjoyed it and as always i've been deck and ben and we hope to see you guys again next week <laughs>